She says, I want to buy a house from um, United Islamic Financing or whatever, and they have a plot and they have a, a profit by of 2.8. They say the final price is fixed and there is a penalty fee if you are late, etc. I cannot answer such questions because a lot of the Muslims call me about such financing and I say I have to look at the contract. And it's not logical for me to look at the contract when it's like 15, 20 pages and there are fine prints all over the place and the devil is in the details. So you cannot just simply say, oh, it says Islamic financing. No, lots of the Islamic financing are un-Islamic. They have scholars on their Sharia board that uh, uh, meet every blue moon and they discuss few things that are Sharia related and they sign and they give the verdict. How this is implemented, nobody knows, not even the scholars. They don't have an auditing system to check whether their fatwas uh, are correctly implemented or not. So the Islamic, quote unquote, bank goes and does whatever he wants from the general corporate banking, the standard uh, conventional corporate banking. And whenever someone doubts it and says, oh, the, but this is haram, this is, oh, we have a fatwa. And nobody knows that this fatwa is on paper, it's not implemented on the ground. So I cannot say that this is halal or haram, but the most authentic opinion among scholars that the late payment fee is riba. Because this is interest taken from a debtor or someone who took a loan from you. So this is interest over a debt. Now, most of these un uh, quote unquote Islamic banks would say, yes, but we don't take this fee, the penalty fee for ourselves. We give it for charity. It's the same concept. The loss that occurred on the one who took the loan, this loss, this interest given to charity, giving to a masjid, taken by the bank itself, it is still riba for him to pay it. Now, taking 2.8% profit over the general amount of the property, and this cannot be increased, there's no problem in that. If I have this pen for one euro, and I'd like to sell it to you in installments, and I say, okay, I'll sell it to you for two euros, 100% profit, no problem. This is fixed. The issue is you're buying the property from the owner or from a third party financing it. So my name is Asim. I'm interested in buying a house that belongs to Abdullah. I go to Abdullah, he says $300,000 for the house. I said, I don't have it in cash. Can you take stones? He said, no, I need the 300,000 in cash. So the bank XYZ, Islamic Bank comes and says, listen, I'll buy it for you and you pay me $400,000 instead of three hundred. dollars I'll take only 33%. Um, I don't know. I'm not good at math. So what do you say? I said, okay. He said, okay, then sign all these documents and papers stating when I read that I buy it, that I'm committed, that I will not default. And I say, okay, what, I, what should I sign here? But you're saying that you're selling me the house and you don't possess the house. I said, yes, after you finish, I will go and possess it. And then I'll resell it to you. This is not permissible. He's selling me something he does not possess. So actually, he doesn't care about the house or it's a mansion or if it's a, if it's a Veron. Uh, uh, he cares about giving me 300,000 and I return them to him 400,000. That's it. What I do with it, it's none of his concern. No, this is not permissible. The second, uh, well, I'm told that we have three minutes left. So uh, there is a, a, something called diminishing ijara, where you become a partner with the bank you buy, and then you rent from this company, that is you and the bank, and the ownership of the bank is diminished and reduced while yours is increasing, but this needs more uh, time.